Welcome back to another tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be teaching you how to do ambient occlusion bacon for your model. This can be a truck, part of a truck, an accessory, whatever you like. So when you've got it imported, I've stripped mine down with no material at all because I'm redoing every single part of every single chassis on this truck because it damn well needs it. So you see the chassis, nothing on it, and the suspension, nothing on it. Just a bare bone model. Now we're going to click on the part we want, which is the chassis. Click on new, just call it frame. Just scroll down, find the shader presets, and to show you what it looks like before with a bog standard texture, we're just going to do the spec. Under mapping, make sure it's got a UV map. And then use the folder icon and navigate to your texture. Which in my case, is Oxblood. So this is it, bog standard, nothing on it, no shading, no definition. It looks a bit flat, a bit ugly. We want to make it look nice as it can, which is where ambient occlusion comes in. We're going to change shader preset to diff spec occlude, or you can do add environment if you want it to reflect the world around you. Okay, black, and assign another UV map to your occlusion. One important thing, which I might show you later in the video, if you assign the same UV map to occlusion and to base, if you've got a tiled texture like a pattern, if you scale up your texture on the same UV channel, you're also going to scale up that occlusion texture, which is going to ruin what you've done. If that makes sense, I'll show you in a second after I've done the bake. So we're going to click on object data to properties, open UV map drop down, click the plus icon and just rename it underscore one. And then change the mapping on the occlusion to underscore one. So now these are separate. You can scale up your base texture as much as you want and it won't affect the result of the occlusion after you've baked it. That is how that's done. We don't need that at the moment, so we can get rid of it. Right, so when you've got your material set up, I'm going to drag a new window. Left hand side, we're going to choose UV editor. Click on new, let's just call it AO test. I do mine in 2048 because there's going to be quite a lot of them. The textures are going to be they're going to pile up the um, file weight, which I really don't want it to do too much. I mean, some people do them in 4K. I think Dom does his um, truck in 8K, but God, the file size is going to be too big for my liking. As nice as it will look, I've got to be cautious of the file size as well. So when you've named it, set the width and height, untick the alpha, we really don't need it. Click OK. Now we're in the viewport, press tab. Press A to select everything. Press U, go to Smart UV Project. Angle limit by default, 66. I made the mistake at first of giving it an island margin, which means each piece is going to be separated by a tiny bit, which in the end result means there'll be less space for the bake to appear on that texture and it'll be squashed, shrunk down, blotchy, it'll look awful. You want it to take up as much space of the UV map as possible. There's no mar uh, no margin. Scale to bounds, which always does what it says in the tin. Click OK. And you can see what it's done. All right, it's gone right to the very edge, taking up as much space as it can. Switch this one to 3D viewport. Drag down another window from the top to separate it into three. The bottom one, UV editor. Click on this browse image. Going to choose our text we made. And the top one is going to be shader editor. As you can see, nodes and everything made by SCS. Or the material. Anywhere you like. 
Shift and A, go to Texture and Image Texture. On the drop down on the left hand side, browse image to be linked. We're going to choose our texture again. And color space is going to be non color because it's black and white. Black is nothing, white is one, basically. It was loading then, I thought it was going to crash. And I'd rather it didn't. Did get all the interiors done yesterday in one fell swoop. There's quite a few new interiors coming to the NG and they look great. More on that later. Now on the right hand side toolbar, we're going to go to render properties and change your render engine from EV to cycles. Now I don't know too much what render and viewport does. I've always done render at 512 and I'm getting really good results. Now under the bake drop down, we're going to go to bake type and choose ambient occlusion because we don't want to bake the UV roughness, glossy, etc. We only want that one. Now the margin is the margin of the bake. 16 pixel is going to come 16 pixels out of the object or the UV even. I've always done mine in one. So it's a nice tight bake. Not too clued up about that, but it's the way I've done it. It works for me. So that is what we're going to do. So that's all set up. Make sure your object is selected and click on bake. You'll get a percentage bar down here. Depending on the resolution and how much you've got to bake, it will take a little while. So we're just going to let it do its thing. Now I'm not going to say this is going to be error free. There might be slight marks depending how you unwrap your object. Like there'll be black faces or splotches. I don't know how to fix all of those. But this is the best way I've found to get decent results. And if you know me, you know I love doing texture work. Anything texture based, I just love it. It's so fun to do. Especially in Substance Painter. Absolutely love Substance Painter to bits. Now you can, while we're waiting for that to finish, you can see the lights here. It's like a, a little shadow. That's a shading issue. I will get that fixed. Very easy to fix. Um, I won't be showing it in this video. There's just a few things that need to be altered. Unfortunately, it's on all the lights on all chassis. I thought it was a bit weird when I engamed it, but I thought it was just a game being the game. But now I know the problem. I might go over how to fix shading issues in the next tutorial. We'll see how that goes. Right, almost done. And there we go. If we tab out now, get rid of the grid. You might be able to tell what has happened. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is, it's basically a shadow. The way I like to think about it. So white is light and black is dark. Then we're going to go to image, save as, must be targa. I'm going to navigate to the work folder. Vehicle, truck, Mercedes, textures, and save. We can close these two windows up and back into our layout. All right, now we're going to go onto the occlusion texture, go onto the folder, and browse to our new AO bake texture. So there it is, AO test. That is a light mask in progress. Um, I did have a bit of a problem where the light blares onto positional and the blinkers, but Carl helped me with that on the forum. Just will need a bit of work if I ever decide to do accessories for rear lights, front lights, etc. So with your uh, texture selected, you nearly said object then, got object on the brain. I'm going to select it. Click on the create TBJ button. And after you created it, select the TBJ. Let's take specular down to 0.2 because we don't want it shiny. It's a chassis. I think I do 0.8 on this one. It's a nice dark ox blood. And hopefully you can see the difference. And I'm not saying it'd be perfect. I don't know any AO bake that hasn't got little blotches. But that is now AO baked. Take it into effect, the ambient light. 
See, it's bright at the top, nice and red. Similar to our base texture. If we go underneath, it's dark because there's no light hitting it. That's what ambient occlusion does. Actually, yeah, we'll show you this. I'll do the um, suspension as well. Why not? While we're at it, again, new window, UV editor on the left, close of this. Get material, let's just call it suspension. Diff spec occlusion. Again, UV map on both. And again, I'm going to do the Oxbub text, uh, texture. And this is going to be a suspension. Yeah, when you name things like a file name, don't put a space. It has to be an underscore. Here it's fine, but not when you're making a texture for an object, it won't like it. So there's that by default. Again, U, Smart UV Project. Will be the same as we did, scale to bounds, no margin, and OK. Changed it a little bit. And again, at the bottom, I'm going to do UV Editor. We're going to find that new suspension one, which is here. And at the top, we're going to do Shader Editor. Shift and A, Texture, and Image Texture. And browse for our suspension texture. And again, Color Space to Non-Color. Click on Render Properties. This will all be set the same. So all you need to do now is click Bake. So as you can see, there really isn't much to it. I mean, the only downside is you've got to wait for it to bake. And there's maybe a few imperfections, but there's nothing too drastic after you baked it. Or well, there shouldn't be if it's unwrapped properly. Nothing quite like playing the waiting game. Almost done now. Right, and that's done. So same again, image, save as, file format to Targa, and save. Close up both these windows, back onto the 3D viewport. In occlusion, the folder icon, navigate to where we saved it. Select, middle button here, create TBJ, a bit darker. Don't forget to select your TBJ, don't export it without one, it will just be blank. I haven't sorted it by date, that's why I can't find it at the top there. And just like with the frame, I'm going to do 0.8 on diffuse and 0.2 on specular, because we don't want shine. That will yours is going to be different depending on your texture and what you've got, but this is the um, values that I do, and there we go. I'm glad that's fixed, that was a problem there. There was a triangle that was black. That's gone. There's a few imperfections here, not too sure what causes that. 
it might be a double face or something, but from back here, you can't really see it. Why is that a white what part of that? Okay, that can be plastic. I'm not too fussed about that. I will be removing these license plates and let you use the default SCS ones. But yeah, that is suspension baked. Black on the bottom and uh, red on the top. And that is done. Chassis complete. It's that simple. Yeah, a bit on the edge there. I don't know what's causing that. Push comes to shove or rebuild it, but I do. I don't want to touch it too much. Drive shafts looking good. So yeah, that is our chassis completely AO baked. Hope that's been helpful. Any more tutorials you want to see, let me know. And if I can do them, I'll make a video. And I'll see you next time for possibly how to fix shading issues and how to correct geometry, which I think I'll split into two videos. So I'm not taking focus away from one thing too much on one video. So have fun with your AO baking and I'll see you next time. Take care. One thing I did forget to show you was the different UVs between the base texture and the occlusion texture. And having them on different UV maps is important. As you can see, we've got the base texture on UV0 and the occlusion texture on UV1. If we select our baked object, see at the top here, UV0 with tweed selected. We can scale this down, scale it up, etc. Still keeps that occlusion around the edge. Back to where it was. But if we switch over to UV1 and scale it up, it breaks that ambient occlusion bake. As you can see, it's completely ruined. That's why it's important to bake it on a separate UV layer. Back into UV1, scale it as much as you like and it will still have that bake. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it with that one. Just take care when you do it. Follow what I've done and you shouldn't have any problems.